Brees Beto is a Wilson Center Africa Program Southern Voices Network scholar. He's also an associate researcher at CRAP in Cote d'Ivoire and is a PhD candidate in political science at Laval University in Canada. He joins us to discuss foreign electoral assistance in post-civil war conflict or in post-civil conflict societies. Brees, welcome to now. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. So one of the things in speaking to you about this before we began recording is I get the sense that sometimes in a post-conflict situation, we get complacent. And once we think elections are achieved, that we're on our way to peace. But what you're telling us is that we can't take peace for granted at that election stage. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, after uh, a major civil war, uh, election just came to... Uh, uh, to solve just one part of the problem, that is to select uh, legitimate electoral leaders. But this is just one part of the, of the problem. So if we need to have uh, a sustainable peace, we have to uh, take into account all the parties that fought the war and try to incorporate them in the, in the system. So election alone cannot do that, so we need more. So yeah. when foreign assistance, is for foreign assistance is provided, what form does that take? What are the things that a, a third party nation does within an election in a, a sovereign state that's trying to achieve peace? Yeah, usually the foreign electoral uh, actors, they brought uh, d diverse kind of assistance. Uh, just because, you know, after a civil war, the state is very weak, so you need a lot of uh, helps. So foreign electoral assistance, they bring uh, uh, technical assistance, they bring funding, but uh, most importantly, they help uh, to train uh, the people, electoral uh, the people stakeholders. people actually working at the polls? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And also uh, to train the institutions that uh, handle the electoral process. So uh, foreign, electoral, uh, foreign electoral actors uh, play a very important role. In doing that. So we see some recent examples where it's worked better than in other places. Uh, success in Sierra Leone and Liberia, maybe not as much in Cote d'Ivoire and, and, Liber and Liberia. Or, 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 uh, yeah. yes, yes, in Liberia, in Liberia, you are right. Yes. So when it works, wh yeah. what are the characteristics that make it work? And when there have been problems, what has gone wrong? Hmm. I think, uh, you know, I think that the, in cases where we have observed uh, success is when uh, uh, the, elect the post-conflict electoral system have been uh, uh, framed as a peace process to when they succeed to combine the two processes. Uh, in cases, uh, uh, for example, in uh, Liberia in 2005 or in uh, Sierra Leone in 2002, uh, there are many other cases, like in South Africa in 1994 or uh, Mozambique in 1994. Uh, so these cases, you can see that the, during the electoral process, uh, foreign electoral assistance provider seriously took into account parties to the conflict and not only parties to the elections. Mm -hmm. So in such way, we observe uh, a better result. But uh, uh, in contrast, for example, in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, in Liberia again, in 1997, Liberia had uh, two uh, civil wars. That's why they had two, uh, two post-conflict uh, uh, elections. Uh, in these failed cases, we realize that they just focus on the electoral uh, process. So they just took into account uh, sta uh, electoral uh, stakeholders, and it does not work. Uh, this is actually the, uh, the example of uh, uh, in Republic of uh, Central African uh, in Central African Republic. Mm -hmm. Right now, you can see that uh, uh, the electoral process uh, uh, is uh, is not going well. Just those who fought the war are exclude, excluded. So only political parties are taken to account for the election. So it will not work. So. Uh, is there any connection between how quickly an election is held after a peace agreement is reached and how well things go? In other words, I'm wondering, does it make sense to wait a little longer so that civil society can become a little more stable before an election is held? Or, or is that just an, an X factor that varies from country to country? Absolutely. I think that there is really uh, uh, a strong correlation between uh, uh, 
election, uh, the peace agreements and the time that uh, uh, we held uh, 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 elections, the post-conflict election. Uh, you know, usually uh, uh, people try to, uh, to rush to organize the election after the peace process, but stakeholders are not uh, ready for that. And usually it does, not, uh, uh, it does not bring the best result. I think that the best result is really to take into account uh, the problem, the issues of the war, and then to try to help stakeholders to navigate the electoral process. You have to prepare them. It means that you need more time. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that it takes uh, uh, somebody have to pay and who, have, who, uh, who, uh, I mean, who has to pay when it takes longer. That's the problem. That's why usually uh, the international community, they just rush to quick fix solution and then uh, The exit. eagerness gets in the way of people are <laughs> Yeah, angry. exactly. The a final thought is uh, about uh, at what st stage in the process do people need to learn the lessons that you're in uncovering through your research? In other words, should this be built into the actual peace agreement or is this a process that happens afterwards when you bring in whatever foreign assistance might be involved in the election? Should this actually be written into the peace agreement? Yes, it can be written in the peace agreement, but uh, you know, um, the peace agreement is, uh, uh, it is a broad agreement. Usually it encompasses uh, ceasefire, the holding of election. Transitional but, justice, yes, exactly, other factors. Yes, all these things. But uh, after the peace agreement, you have to implement it. And during the implement implementation process, so this is how, uh, where you come up with uh, detailed uh, solutions, procedures, how to do that. That's why after the peace agreement, it's very important to uh, try to get uh, uh, all the stakeholders together uh, very often to discuss how are we going to implement this. And by doing that, yes, you come up with uh, a more detailed program that can sustain, uh, that can bring uh, peace, and that can also facilitate the electoral process. Well, Brice, uh, thank you for joining us, and, and thanks for sharing your, your work with us, and continued success, we wish you. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks.